following video is not made for kids. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello to my subscribers, this is the Tia Fan Geek coming to you with a video review of the Transformers War for Cybertron Trilogy Kingdom Deluxe Class Autobot Huffer. Released in, I believe it was, Wave 2 of the Kingdom line. Uh, Huffer, Huffer has been well received by Transformers fans and collectors. This is not only due to the fact that this is the most recent action figure of Huffer released, but th to my knowledge, this is the first ever deluxe class sized action figure of Huffer that's been released by Hasbro. And for me, this has become the uh, physically largest, and it has become the first and only deluxe class size action figure of Huffer in my Transformers collection. And uh, over the years, Huffer hasn't really uh, been too well as popular of a Transformers character compared to other Transformers characters, such as Optimus Prime, despite the fact that Huffer also has a semi-truck for his vehicle mode. In the first episode of the Transformers cartoon series, Huffer whined that the Autobots weren't uh, built to be warriors like the Decepticons were, and because of that, a lot of Transformers fans over the years have written off Huffer as being a bit of a whiner. But if Huffer really is one of the least popular Transformers characters, then for me it's just proof that the Transformers franchise has been a success because Huffer is not the uh, least liked Transformers character character ever to be created. Unfortunately, in recent years, there have been more uh, Transformers characters that have been uh, less popular than Huffer has been. But yes, uh, there is Huffer inside his box. I apologize for the reflection on the uh, plastic window. But yeah, I'm just really enjoying the overall look and design of Huffer. Here on the artwork, there's his vehicle mode of an orange semi-truck. There's his robot mode. Ode. There's the arc on top. Top of the box, nothing new. Autobot logo. Bottom of the box, even less. This side of the box, you've got the poster image for the Kingdom line. This side of the box, you've got the official product photos of Huffer in his robot mode and his vehicle mode. And he transforms back and forth between both modes in 14 steps. And all in all, I'm just really enjoying the design and the engineering that went into Huffer. Uh, it's been confirmed that Huffer, this mold, is being is going to be used not just once or even twice, but up to as many as four times. Now, Hasbro and Dakar tell me that decided to repaint and retool Huffer, not only into pipes, but also into uh, Road Ranger and Puffer, two more obscure Transformers characters that are that share the same body type as Huffer does. Uh, so yes, uh, this has been one of the, become one of the more widely used Deluxe Class figures to come out of the Kingdom line. And one thing I like about Huffer, it isn't really shown too well on the official product photos on the back of the box, but Huffer's laser gun splits into two halves, and then his uh, clawed shield, you know, that he's shown using on this arm. They've come um, together to form the uh, back section of Huffer's semi-truck mode, and it basically makes a bit of a uh, flatbed uh, uh, connection site. And some people have shown off in their reviews already that Huffer is capable of hooking up with the uh, uh, trailer for the uh, Earth Rising Kingdom uh, War for Cybertron Trilogy Leader Class Optimus Prime figure, so... If you want to reenact the scene in the Generation 1 cartoon where Huffer pulled Optimus Prime's trailer, you can do that with the Kingdom H Deluxe Class Huffer figure and the Leader Class Optimus Prime figure. But yeah, all in all, I'm just uh, really amazed at how how uh, detailed Huffer is, is. And without further delay, we will take a close look at him in robot mode and get him out of his box. Alright, and here is Huffer out of his box. And I gotta say, he is really impressive looking. Again, as I said, Ed Huffer hasn't really been too popular of a Transformers character, but there's no denying the Kingdom Deluxe class figure that's been designed for him by Hasbro and Dakar Tomy is really impressive looking. And it is, one, in my opinion, one of the better Deluxe figures of the Kingdom line, despite its small size. There is unfortunately no denying that Huffer is one of the shorter Deluxe class Transformers figures. First size comparison with a one of the uh, smallest deluxe figures to be released East during the run of the Transformers War vs. Cybertron trilogy. Here is Kingdom Huffer next to another mini-bot, uh, Netflix, but here he is next to Netflix Bumblebee. As you can see, Huffer is only uh, one and a half, he's only, uh, only a few inches taller than Bumblebee is. I'd say it's about half an inch, actually. But yeah, Huffer. Yeah, both these figures are much smaller than other deluxe figures that have come out. I apologize for not grabbing any larger size Transformers figure. Figures to do a size comparison with Huffer. Huffer, but all in all, I just really like him. And 
if you don't want Huffer to have the uh, have the uh, shield being held in his hand, you can place it here on his back. I can store it there on his backpack. Right, but that's really the only place needs to store it. Get this out. And, uh, but yeah, all in all, uh, Huffer does have some pretty good articulation uh, to rotate his head, and you do have to push back on his backpack, which is the, uh, the top section of the cab of his semi-alt mode. mode. But that is, a, uh, even though it might seem like it's a bit much of a backpack act for any Transformers character to have, this is accurate to how the Generation 1 version of Huffer transformed. Um, got standard articulation in the arms. They can rotate forwards and backward. It's at the shoulder, but you do have to angle them outwards slightly to get them past the backpack. He's got a swivel joint in the bicep, hinged elbow. Uh, the hands, hands, uh, they are unfortunately fixed in play. Ace, there's no way of uh, rotating them at the wrist. Ist, ist, and there's no way of putting them inside. The Huffer's forearms when you transform into his alt mode. mode. But at least he does have a waist swivel. as universal jointed legs, so they can only go out that far, so Huffer can't do a full splits. They can go forward that much and backwards that much, so more, more movement backwards than forwards. A swivel joints in the thighs, hinge knees, and unfortunately due to how Huffer transforms, it is slightly below the kneecap kneecap on the knee joint, so if you're OCD about the orientation of joint joints, that might might be a little off-putting for you. And Huffer does have ankle rockers, but they are on very uh, joints that use pencil-thin plastic to rotate. Eight, but yeah, all in all, I just really enjoy the design of Huffer. Huffer and I enjoy how he, oh, the way, uh, the final action figure of him came out. And before or I forget, for a size comparison with another action figure of Huffer, here is the uh, previous Huffer figure that was released before the Kingdom figure. This is the Combiner Wars Legends Class Huffer figure that was released back in uh, either 2015 or 2016. And this one was a repaint of an Optimus Prime figure that just had a different head sculpt. And all in all, all you can really tell how Hasbro and Dakar Tummy uh, really went full-blown Generation 1 when designing Kingdom Huffer compared to the uh, uh, Combiner Wars Huffer figure. So yeah, uh, Hasbro and Dakar Tummy did hint for a while that any future Huffer figure could potentially be a repaint of Optimus Prime instead of being its own mold, but the Kingdom line has shown that Hasbro and Dakar Tummy have been willing to design new mold molds even for... Uh, uh, not so popular Transformers characters such as Huffer. Um, one thing that the Combiner Wars figure of Huffer does have over the Kingdom version is that the uh, much darker navy blue used here on the Combiner Wars Legends Huffer, it's accurate to the Generation 1 Huffer action figure, which did have navy blue and the more uh, the lighter, more muted blue used here on the Kingdom Huffer figure. This is accurate to Huffer's animation model. Sumbo Studios made Huffer a much brighter shade of blue than his Generation 1 action figure, so um, comparing the Kingdom version of Huffer with Combiner Wars Huffer, it's an apples to oranges type of comparison. But overall, I do enjoy the way the design of Huffer is robot mode, and now we will get into transforming him into his vehicle mode. Oh, I almost forgot. Before we get take a look at Huffer's vehicle mode, here's the uh, uh, collector card that came with Huffer. Huffer it's uh, my copy of Huffer came with. Uh, Megatron, and on the back, like you've got Decepticon Megatron on, and that is an image of him from IDW's comic books, where before he became commander of the Decepticons, he was a gladiator. Hater. And I've always enjoyed that backstory IDW gave, gave him. But this video is on Huffer, so without further delay, we will get Huffer uh, transformed off camera and take a look at his vehicle mode. All right, and so here is Huffer in his vehicle mode, and I gotta say that it is, uh, for what it does, uh, is trying to transform the exact same way that the Generation One version of Huffer did. It is a pretty decent looking 
vehicle mode. Oh, uh, Huffer has remained unique compared to other Transformers characters due to the fact that I personally do not know any other Transformers character that has an orange uh, uh, semi-track actor truck for a vehicle mode. Um, one thing that a lot, some Transformers collectors have had trouble dealing with is the fact that Huffer's windows are done in clear plastic. plastic. But all in all, all uh, the design of the truck cab is pretty decent looking and it is fairly accurate to how the Generation 1 version of Huffer transformed. The only gripe to be had with Huffer in his vehicle mode is if you look right through there, there you can see straight through Huffer and there's one of my eyes peeping out through the other side. Alright, so yeah, uh, all in all, all that is a disappointment having that huge gap up right there. Here under Huffer's truck cab because it looks like it's been elevated, elevated, and that the wheels are on a pair of hydraulics lifting them off the ground. But yeah, overall, uh, I do like the design of Huffer. Uh, this is what he looks like without his uh, weapons accessories attached to him. And um, apart from that uh, gaping hole on the hole on the side of Huffer, the only other complaint to be had uh, with Huffer is the fact that he can't hide his hands in vehicle mode, and so. Oh, uh, even though they do end up at a place where if you're looking at Huffer from the front, you wouldn't see them, and he does sort of pull off being a robot in disguise successfully, but it's looking at the front of Huffer's uh, uh, tractor cab. And when you look at the front of Huffer, because it's all one piece and there's no uh, lines or gaps from different panel sections, all in all, it's looking at, at the front view of Huffer where he's a robot in disguise. On the side, he loses it because of that gap, and then he really fails to be a robot in disguise due to the robot mode fists being visible there. But yeah, Huffer, he does use the exact same shape of trailer hitch that Optimus Prime, I'm the leader class Optimus Prime figure uses, and there's just enough room on the back of Huffer's tractor cab that the trailer can attach to it as well. And even though I keep going on about that, I didn't actually grab the tr my Optimus Prime figure off the shelf, so I apologize for not showing that off. But yeah, this is what Huffer looks like. Like in his vehicle mode, he's got that graded metal bed that most trucks you use there on the back. And here is a close-up of the uh, claw shield Huffer used in his robot mo mode. It's got the uh, uh, SWAT team uh, crowd control oil visor, visor there, and it connects to the three uh, peg holes that aren't on the trailer hitch here on the back. So when you attach Huffer's accessory pieces, the gimmick of being compatible with Optimus Prime's trailer does end up getting lost because there's no uh, 5mm hole on the top, top of the shield. So you can only attach Huffer when the shield is removed, and the only other place to put the shield without making Huffer look too ridiculous is the 5mm port here on the uh, tractor roof. Oof. And for the first time out of the box, it can be a little finicky. Uh, Splitting Huffer's uh, laser gun into the two uh, halves that form the uh, side panels of the truck bed. So I will uh, get back to you in one second as soon as I separate it. All right, and so here's one of the main here's the main reason why the two halves of Huffer's laser gun and are uh, very difficult to separate, especially out of the box for the first time. There's only three teeny tiny little pegs holding the two halves of the laser gun together here on the other half. As I drop it on cam, and right here on the other side, there's peg holes on that side. I don't know how many millimeters these are. If it's uh, if these pegs are one or two millimeters, millimeters, but yeah, they are very thin. So be very careful when you separate the uh, two halves of Huffer's vehicle mode from each other. And for those of you who I I haven't I haven't really shown off. Didn't really show off Huffer's laser gun too much, so I apologize for that. But if you look here on the side laser gun, you'll notice uh, the entire laser gun is orange plastic, and then the out exterior of it's been painted this kind of metal gray. So then you'll notice these orange slots on both halves of the laser gun. And what they do is they connect into these unpainted orange tabs here on the truck bed. So yeah, the uh, claw shield weapon is the same orange plastic used on the rest of Huffer. Friend, so you take the uh, two halves of the laser gun like this. 
this. And now, now Huffer is a semi-truck that has a flatbed on the back of it. Uh, to my knowledge, the only Transformers vehicles that are small enough to fit on the back of Huffer are the Micromasters from the Siege and Earthrise lines. But I love how the two halves of the uh, laser gun connect to the actual uh, claw shield because as if you wanted to, you could uh, uh, take the entire flatbed at a part and make Huffer a uh, more G1 accurate a vehicle mode without the flatbed on the back of it. But yeah, I just really love the way a Hasbro and Decartomi managed to incorporate a Huffer's uh, accessory pieces as part of his vehicle mode. Oh, instead of just, uh, oh, it's a big laser gun, just plug it on the roof. I've always enjoyed a Transformers figures where the weapons uh, interact with the vehicle mode. Even though it even though it does make losing the weapons uh, much more tedious and finding replacement copies if uh, 10, 15 years from now, if you find a used copy of a figure on eBay and the accessory pieces are gone, it uh, does make it difficult to have the vehicle mode incomplete if you lose the accessory pieces, but I do enjoy that more, more compared to Transformers figures where the laser gun is just stuck on the roof of the vehicle mode. Now I apologize, I didn't get Bumblebee transformed into his alt mode because it's very late at night when I'm uh, recording this video. My family's in bed and so I'm trying not to keep them awake, so... For a quick size comparison in vehicle mode, here is Kingdom Huffer again compared to the Combiner Wars Legends class Huffer. Again, this version of Huffer from Combiner Wars is a repaint of an Optimus Prime figure, whereas Kingdom Huffer is an entirely brand new mold. And all in all, I just over overall enjoy the overall look of Huffer. Uh, some of the detailing on Huffer's vehicle mode. You can see the windshield wipers are painted black. The front grille and the headlights and the bumper are all painted silver. Here on the side of Huffer, the rearview mirrors have been painted silver, so that's a nice detail to see there. Uh, oh. Air, these, uh, Huffer has some uh, uh, headlights uh, here on top. Uh, they're done in the same clear blue plastic used on the windshield. And as there you can see inside of Huffer's tractor cab, that's actually the hinge joint. The joint that allows uh, is the uh, truck cab to... Uh, move forward and backward and transform Huffer. But if you have an active imagination, it sort of looks like the interior seating of a tractor semi. And then here you've got exhaust. You've got uh, four hole holes, two on each of the exhaust pipes that are formed from Huffer's arms. Arms. I love the silver paint used on the hubcaps on his wheels. And also here on the back, Huffer has all four of his tail lights painted red. So yeah, that is a nice... There is a, quite a few paint paint apps that have been applied to Kingdom Huffer. Um, even though I'm holding it up in the air, uh, here on, as you can see, putting him on his box, even though there isn't too much clearance compared to Huffer's robot mode chest and torso next to the wheels, if you put Huffer on a flat surface, he does roll all fairly well. But because of the very low clearance, clearance underneath Huffer, uh, you will it'll, uh, only be able to roll him around on a, on a completely flat surface. If you try and go him off-roading, he will get stuck. Okay. And this is just a minor nitpick with Huffer, but the way he's uh, the way Huffer transforms, the way his joints line up, the truck cab does. Uh, tilt upward ever so slightly. That's because of the hinge joints inside. I prevent Huffer from uh, having the entire uh, tractor cab sit flat at compared to each other, the front and back halves. But nitpicks aside, I'd, I wholeheartedly enjoy this version of Huffer. It has become my favorite figure of Huffer in my Transformers collection. So do I recommend getting getting the Transformers Kingdom Deluxe class Huffer figure. Absolutely. You cannot go wrong having this Transformers figure in your Transformers collection. It does. Actually, it looks impressive. The transformation is fairly easy. Easy. And all in all, this has been... This arguably has become the best action figure of Huffer that has ever been released by Hasbro and Dakar Tommy. So thank you to my subscribers to your continued support. This has been the TF Fan Geek, and until next time, you guys, please like, comment, and subscribe, ring the bell icon for notification. Stay safe, stay healthy, and until next time, you guys, transform and roll out. Goodbye, everyone.